Hi friends, welcome to Happy Nursing. This is Ila. Today we will discuss about another theory called the self-care deficit theory. It was given by Dorothea Elizabeth Orem, also known as the Orem's model of nursing. Here you will see several terms like self-care agency, self-care demands, therapeutic self-care demands, nursing agency, etc. We will be discussing all these terms as we go further into the topic. Self-care means care of self, means care of our own. So this theory focuses on each individual's ability to perform self-care. Now it is composed of three interrelated theories. The theory of self-care, the self-care deficit theory and the theory of nursing systems which is further classified into wholly compensatory, partially compensatory and supportive educative. First we will discuss about the self-care theory. This theory focuses on the performance or practice of activities that individuals initiate and perform on their own behalf to maintain life, health and well-being. What does that mean? That means it talks about the activities done by a human being on his own in order to maintain his well-being. For example, we get up from bed, brush our teeth, take a shower, change our clothes, take our food, etc. These are the activities which are done by us to maintain the normal flow of life and our health and well-being. Now there are three kinds of self-care requisites or requirements, universal, developmental and health deviation. Universal self-care requisites are the requirements which are needed for the maintenance of the functioning of human body like maintenance of sufficient intake of air, water and food, care associated with the elimination of wastes from the body, maintenance of a balance between activity and rest, balance between solitude and social interaction, prevention of different hazards to life, human functioning and human well-being. Developmental self-care requisites are either specialized expressions of universal self-care requisites that have been particularized for developmental processes or they are new requisites derived from a condition or associated with an event. That means developmental self-care requisites are those self-care needs which are either for any developmental process. Developmental process means a stage where a person is developing himself further or it may derive from a new condition or event associated with his physical or mental development which was not in the scenario till today. For example, he is moving to abroad and going to live without his family. That may give rise to anxiety, fears, doubts or confusions within him. He may need the help of a counsellor or maybe he is going through puberty. Now pubertal changes affect the young minds and body often, adjusting to which is not always easy. There are so many new things to be kept in mind, new things to learn, habits to modify, the way we look change, the way we sound change. So obviously we need some developmental self-care requisites that time. Health deviation self-care requisites are required in any illness, injury or disease when our health is deviated from the normal routine. Next is theory of self-care deficit. This theory focuses on when nursing is needed for self-care activities. That means the person is not able to do his self-care activities anymore on his own. So there is a deficit in self-care which needs to be fulfilled. There comes the need of nursing. Next is the theory of nursing systems. This theory is the result of relations between the legitimate nurse and legitimate client. This system is activated when the client's therapeutic self-care demand exceeds the available self-care agency. Now there are two words, therapeutic self-care demand and self-care agency. Therapeutic self-care demand is defined in the Orem's theory as the self-care actions to be performed for some duration to meet known self-care requisites by using valid methods and related sets of actions and operations. Self-care actions means self-care activities are performed by a person for some duration that is for a limited time to meet known self-care requisites. We have already discussed before what are the self-care requisites, breathing, taking food and water, excretion or elimination, maintaining balance between sleep and rest, etc. So a person is working to maintain these self-care requisites for some duration. Why some duration? Because there is a limit after which he will need help and he is doing that by using some valid methods 
and taking actions related to those valid methods. For example, one who is having bronchial asthma and uses an inhaler suddenly develops respiratory distress. So there is a demand of self-care for which therapy is needed. Demand of air. Our first self-care requisite, maintenance of sufficient intake of air. So he is not able to maintain that. Now what will he do? He will use some of his known methods like taking the inhaler and say he gets relief for the time being. Now he can continue this only for some duration of time because after that he will be needing specialized care. Next is self-care agency. It is the ability of human beings to perform self-care activities which can be affected by some basic conditioning factors like age, gender, developmental state, health status, socio-cultural orientation, healthcare system factors, family system factors, patterns of living, environmental factors, resource adequacy and resource availability, etc. For example, one who is very old cannot take care of his own. He needs some help in that. So that is age related factor. One who is very weak due to sickness cannot take care of his own. He needs someone to do that for her, for him or her. So that is health status related factor. So in simple terms, the nursing system is activated when the ability of a person to take self-care is not enough to fulfill his therapeutic demands related to self-care. Now there is another word which we saw at the beginning that was nursing agency. Nursing agency is defined as a complex property or attribute of people educated and trained as nurses that enables them to act, know and help others meet their therapeutic self-care demands by exercising or developing their own self-care agency. That means the nurses who are trained and educated to take care of people have certain properties. What properties? Properties to help others meet their therapeutic self-care demands. Now how we are doing that? By exercising and developing their own self-care agency. The people have their own ability to take self-care but that is affected somehow. So we the nurses are further developing that with our assistance that is called nursing agency. Now there are three types of nursing systems through which we are assisting them wholly compensatory, partially compensatory and supportive educative system. Wholly compensatory system consists of persons who are fully dependent on others for their self-care activities and well-being. For example, a newborn, a post-operative patient who cannot ambulate and is confined to bed. Those who need partial assistance are included in the partially compensatory system. For example, one who is having one-sided weakness can ambulate on his own but needs a support while standing. One with a minor surgery may perform his self-care activities but needs assistance. Like uh, he can brush his teeth but he needs someone to take him to the washroom. Like that. Last one is the supportive educative system. This system includes individuals who are able to perform the self-care activities on their own but needs the support of education, needs proper teaching regarding the techniques of self-care. For example, um, one who is newly diagnosed with diabetes needs proper education on how to take care of himself, what are the additional measures he should take, what are the lifestyle modifications he should do, etc. So today we learned about the self-care deficit theory, the three interrelated theories within it, types of self-care requisites, therapeutic self-care demand, and so if this video is useful to you then please like and share this video and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.